Shepherd of a soul, Savior of a soul, Lover of a soul. We are on the Lord's side. We will never give up. We you we worship you we magnify you lord because you are a good god mm-hmm. king of all kings lord of all lords we woke up all this morning that we might see another day you went into our homes individually to tap us and to wake us up oh god and you brought us before your presence that we may hear from you this morning Father, I ask, O oh God, that you open our ears and our heart that we might hear from you. Father, Amen. any of distraction, the taking away from us, O oh God, as you will comfort. Amen. Father, speak to me and speak to me to the end that we all be blessed and be fit to live the life you desire of us today. Amen. In Jesus Christ, mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. This morning we have a message titled The Suffering Worth Enduring. The Suffering Worth Enduring. But then, the life we are living as, a, as children of God is a life full of suffering. A life that even though you like it or not, you must suffer. A life that in one way or the other, you must be you must be humiliated. A life that people must hate you. A life that Mr. Uh, Daniel, please meet your mind. Thank you. Yes, sir. A life that people must fight you. No matter how you try to please people, because of the cross you are carrying, because of the cross of suffering, suffering must come in one way or the other. And I've come to tell somebody here today that the suffering you are suffering is worth enduring. Sometimes I don't hear people saying, ah, our father has suffered so much, he's dead, at least let him go and rest. Ah, our mother has suffered so much, let her go and rest. Then the question comes to my mind, who did he suffer for? Who did she suffer for? Maybe if they are not really the biography of the person, you find out that in all the suffering, there was nothing like he or she was born again. All the suffering you are talking about is how he labors for the children, how she was the one taking care of the children, everything. At the end, when she died, the children she labored for, the people he labors for, we say he or she have gone to rest. Um, I ask myself, who will give such a person such, such rest? 
Where would the rest come from? Hey, he was sick for so long. Let him go and rest. Where would the rest be? But tell you something. There's only one man that if you labor for, if you suffer for, they'll guarantee you a rest after the suffering is hurt. And that man name is Jesus Christ. He's worthy of our laboring. He's worthy of our suffering because he won did it for us. Brethren, the Bible made us understand in 1 Peter chapter 4 from verse 12. But think it not strange concerning the fairy trial which is to try you as though some strange things happen unto you. Either you like it or not, things must happen to you so long as you are carried across Think it not strange because that is the life you are called to live. As true children of God, we are called to suffer. But then we are called to worship. What we do before we, we, we go into worship. So, children of God, we are called to suffer before the glory that will be revealed. Verse 13 say, But rejoice in as much as you are partaker of Christ's suffering. Rejoice, you are being humiliated. Rejoice, you are being forsaken by people you love. Rejoice that you are now lonely, you that were reigning before. Rejoice that you are a partaker of Christ's suffering. That when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with a single joy. This is why it is worth suffering or it is worth enduring. The suffering of Christ is worth enduring because there's glory after. The life you are living in pain now is worth living because there's nothing to be compared to what the Lord is keeping for you after then. He said in verse 14, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye for the spirit of glory of God rested upon you. On their part, those who are mock making mockery of you, those who are doing whatever they do to you, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. Let the name of the Lord be glorified in everything you are doing. No matter the situation, make sure the name of the Lord is glorified in it. Because that is what you are called into. Verse 14, 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody, in other people's matter. This is where we must be very, very careful. We must be very, say, be harmless as do, but wise as a serpent. Make sure our suffering is no wrong suffering. Make sure our suffering is justifiable. Make sure we are not suffering because of what we have done, but because of what we know nothing about. But take it with joy. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. If any man suffer as a Christian, verse 16, let him not be ashamed. Have you given our tracks the spirit on you? Don't be ashamed. Have you... You are about to give that child, just look at you and say, Look at this one. Rejoice! Don't be ashamed. Don't drop it. Don't, don't stop. Don't be ashamed. Be, but let him glorify God. Let her glorify God. Let them glorify God on this behalf. For the time is coming 
rather, seventeen. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first began at us, where shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of Christ? And if you go further, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner be? Brethren, I don't know what you are going through for Christ. I don't know the name they have given you. I don't know what is going on even in your home because you have decided to serve God. Brethren, it's worth enduring. The more you suffer for him, the more the glory that will be revealed in you. The more you labor for him, the more the glory the Lord is keeping for you. The Bible told us in 1 Peter 5 and 10, But the God of all grace, who have called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that he has suffered a while, the Lord never promised us that it's going to be roses. He never promised us that ah, you'll be loved and ah, it's going to be wonderful, just as some preachers are preaching today. A preacher have carried the cross away from the from the children of God and are giving them butter and bread. So preachers have made the children of God to become part of this world. Where the Bible says we are not of this world. Though we are in this world. After you have suffered a why, no matter how long the suffering is on this world, in this world, you say, What is why? You might be, you might, maybe you are, you are, you have been going through some pain for Christ, maybe for five years, ten years. As far as God is concerned, is for the why. Make you perfect, establish, established, straighten, settle you. There is no amount of settlement you will be settled in this world that will be nothing. The, where the real settlement is is in heaven. There's no amount of establishment they will establish you here and say, yes, yes, I'm comfortable now. You will still suffer as so long you are on earth here. Where our establishment is, where our strength, perfect strength and settlement is, is in heaven. That's why I say, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I don't know what you are going through and you're about to say, let me give up. He said, no, don't give up. Your sentiments are with you. That glorious joy that no one can ever take away from you again are with you. Have they forcefully forceful seized joy out of you? You are not living in pain. Somebody who, everybody will want, there was a time you were, be you were like a celebrity in your family. Husband, wife, friends were celebrating you, but now you are not living as alien. Gate. It's worth enduring. All these are happening because of the glory that is awaiting you. That pain you are going through is worth going through. It's worth enduring. The Bible told us in Romans chapter 5, from verse 3 to 6. I start from verse 1 for clarity. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Two, two. By whom also we have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. By where we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. We glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Four, and patience experience, and experience hope. Five, and hope maketh not ashamed. You see, I hope in Christ, don't be ashamed. Because the love of God is shared abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Verse six. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, 
Christ died for the ungodly. For this alone is worth suffering for. He died for you when you are in the faculty of sin. Not just only died for you, he resurrected for your justification and he have gone and uh, uh, he have told you, I'm coming back again to take you to where I am. Verse 6, I think it again. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Brethren, the Bible told us in Romans chapter 8, verse 18. For I record that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. What a wonderful hope. This is our brother Paul talking to you and I here. I record that the suffering, the pain, is going, it was going through, going from one prison to the other. How many of us here have been, have been, have been prison? How many of you also have been flogged? The one that the Bible told us in Hebrews chapter, chapter uh, 12, verse 4. You have not yet resisted unto blood. You have not yet resisted. What, what have they done for that? Many of us now are saying, let us give up. No. So why I'm still fighting on? Why I'm still standing? Because the glory that shall be revealed upon me on that day is not worthy to be compared to the pain that I'm going through now. So the pain is worth enduring. The life is worth living. The life of pain, life of distress, life of shame for Christ. Brethren, the Bible told us that many are the affliction of the righteous. But surely in due time, the Lord will deliver him or her. Many are the mockers of the righteous. But in due time, the Lord will deliver him. Psalm 34, verse 19. Brethren, the Bible made us understand in 2 Corinthians Chapter 4, from verse 15. For all things are for your sake, that the abundant grace may through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, get hold of this, though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day that's why we come here every morning the holy ghost hour to renew our strength for the day because our lord might take us again but when you remember what god has told us in the morning we keep moving though our outward man is in pain though we are being humiliated but the inward man is getting stronger and stronger every day verse 17 for our light affliction which is but for a moment, started to get this. To our light affliction, which is but for a moment, working for us a far more exceedingly, exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Everlasting weight of glory. Everlasting joy. The light affliction. No matter what you are going through, the Bible says it's light affliction. Like the, the other week, some, some of us here travel for more than nine hours plus journey just to go and look for a soul. It's not an, it's not an easy thing. It's painful. But they are doing it because they know what is ahead of them. I don't know what they are going through. It's a, it's a light affliction that is gathering your glory ahead of you and in due time in due season the glory shall be revealed if you don't give up in the name of jesus christ amen, amen. that's 18 of second Corinthians 4 why we look not at the thing which are seen but but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporary but the things which are not seen are eternal 
no matter what you are seeing, no matter the things around you, there are nothing to be compared to. The Bible says, eyes have not seen it. Ears have not heard it. Neither has it entered the heart of man. What well, the Lord is preparing for those who are suffering for him. The only reason why we give up in the, is if we think that everything we are doing is because of the gain of this earth. And the Bible told us in Romans chapter number 15. No, um, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 19. If only in this world we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Is that, so let's so check it there if I'm right. If only in this world we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. If you are serving God because of your every game, you are wasting time. Serving God because of what your pastor told you. If you do this, you'll be blessed. Your money will come. If that is the reason why you're serving God, you are wasting time. But it is because of those things that eyes cannot see. The eternal things, I tell you, stand strong. And in due time, you will get the reward in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brethren, the Bible told us in Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Who is he that condemned it? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that he is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also make an intercession for us? You know what we are going through. He's seen everything. 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. What is that thing that separates you now? Tita in Zita, mercy. What is that thing that is separating you from God? Tell that thing, leave me alone. Verse 36. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are, are, we are counted as sheep. For the slaughter, what is worse than this? We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conqueror. Through Christ, through him that loved us. Verse 28. For I am persuaded, what about you? In the same Apostle Paul, he was persuaded. He was sure was confident that nothing shall separate him from the Lord. That, ne that neither death. The worst thing that will happen to a man, my blood sister, is death. Nothing more. But look at a man here who wants to live with flesh and blood. Where there is no job is separating me and you now from the Lord. Where there is one somebody is sorted us is separating you and I from the Lord. But look at somebody here. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angel, nor prosperities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor 39, nor high things, nor high, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So I must say, set yourself. What is that thing that gradually pulling you away from God? When he said, he's persuaded nothing can separate him. Start cheating. Search yourself. What is that thing that is separating us? Tell that thing, no! No, I will not allow you. The homelessness is strong. In due time, you be settled. Is it joblessness? Be strong. In due time, we will settle you. Amen. Remember, the Lord told us in First Peter 4 verse 1, For as more than as Christ has suffered for us, Sister Abbott said that the Lord is not telling us to do what he has not done. He is not telling us to pass through what he did. All the days of his life when he was on earth here, it was marked with suffering, pain. 
For as much as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. In all the suffering, let us not sin. They, 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 they insult you. Thank you. God bless you. Say, so revive not. They beat him, they flog him, but he never, ever challenged them. Say, so earn yourself with the same mind. No matter what is going on, but because of the glory that we reveal. Remember what he told us in, in, in John chapter 14, 1 to 4, 1, 3. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. For in my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go my way to prepare a place for you. And I'll come back and take you. That's where I am. There you shall be also. Let this be our consolation. Will be our comfort. It's not a man that will say one thing and do the other one. He has said it, he will do it. Amen. Be strong, be courageous, stand firm. The journey is not too far anymore. Soon and very soon, who we are expecting shall come. And then the system of this world will be no more. Then the pain of this world, say bye bye to it. I want you to stand on your feet, on it down. I say, Lord, wherever I was backsliding gradually or knowingly, wherever my faith was failing me, have mercy upon me, strengthen me again, empower me, grant me your grace that I may be able to endure joyfully. To the end, in the name of Jesus Christ, hope you must pray. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father and my God, Baba, Father, Lord, as we cry unto your holy name, Baba, Father, Lord, wherever my faith, oh God, Baba, was failing me, Baba, Father, please have mercy upon my soul, Baba, wherever my faith, oh God, Baba, Father, Lord, oh God, Baba, Father, please, I cry out for your mercy, Baba, have mercy upon my soul, Oh, Baba, have mercy upon my soul, Baba. Father, Lord, and draw me close to you again, Baba. Father, please draw me close to you again, Baba. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father and my God, Baba. Father, Lord, I cry out for your mercy, Baba. Have mercy upon my soul. Jesus, let me pray. Amen. Are you out there? You're not born again. Brethren, this is your hour. If the Lord will come and strengthen those who are already there, it means He also wants you to join them. Say after me, if you want to um, receive Christ this morning as your Lord and as your Savior, the only life worth living. Say, Lord Jesus. I've heard your word. I realize I am a sinner. Living in a far country of sin and iniquity. But your word have located me as light this morning. And I've decided to live the life of sin alone. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me clean with your heat soup. And purge me with your blood. I ask that from now on, that you please, Lord Jesus, take my name away from the book of death and write it in the book of life. You are my Lord and personal Savior from this moment. All things have passed away from now. 
and my life have become new. Thank you, Father, for saving my soul. I go now to see no more. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I bless you. I worship you. I exalt your name. Amen. Father, you have come to comfort us this morning. Father, let us woke up from one pain on the other, thinking, how long shall I do this? Father, you have come to tell us that it's for the why. And then the glory shall be revealed. And what I ask of you is that hold our hands by yourself. Mm -hmm. allow, if you allow us to hold you, our hands will be working. Father, hold us tight and never, ever let us go. Mm -hmm. Amen. Us, to always look unto you. Help us, oh God, to always be there for each other, pray for each other on this mountain in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, I pray that this word of God will not be used against me, not against Amen. anyone of us on the last day, but rather Amen. a compass, a propeller that will lead us to your kingdom. In Jesus Christ, mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Over to you. Bishop of a soul, shepherd of a soul.